everybody, Seth Campbell here again with a new Segway Says podcast. Uh, you may be able to hear in this video my voice is a little hoarse because I've been singing myself silly at the piano bar lately, but I promised one of these a week and by golly I'm going to deliver. So this week um, the f is two songs. One is fairly obscure, one is extremely popular. And the, the first song is a concept near and dear to my heart because it's a really, really big popular artist. But it's a song that is lesser known. And, you know, it's one of the deep cut album tracks, whatever you want to call it. That's uh, It's recently made, made a bit of a comeback live, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But I always feel like with the big artists, a lot of times the songs that don't get picked up as hit singles are just as good as the hits. And I love the hits as much as the next person. But sometimes the album tracks are just really fun. And this is a Billy Joel album track from the 57th... 52nd Street, I can't speak today, 52nd Street album, it's called Stiletto, and it's recently made a comeback on live records as, you know, sort of the obscure song for the diehard fans, and the version I'm basing this segue on is the version from 12 Gardens Live, and that's important because it's in a lower key, we'll talk more about that shortly, and the second song is about as unobscure as you can possibly get, it's We Will Rock You by Queen, which everybody knows. I don't think that is an overstatement. <laughs> At this point in pop culture, everybody knows this song. So, the two songs have the same tempo and are in the same key by virtue of the version of Stiletto we're using. The original 52nd Street album is an F. actually played it in that key, so that was tougher to do than, uh, than it may seem. But the, the key I learned it in, it's the version of 12 Gardens Live, which is a super version of it, is in E, so it's a half step down. And so that's the main groove of stiletto. And what I can't really replicate with a solo piano, but I, uh, is that the drums, uh, there's a, like a side stick and what later eventually becomes a snare hit on uh, the third beat, which should create a slightly familiar pattern if you know where this is going. to the chorus a bit there, I sang that the choruses are different, I jumbled them together a bit, but you get the picture. I played a little more of that than usual because I figure uh, a lot of you may be Billy Joel fans but may not have heard of that song, so I wanted to give you sort of a complete, or a fairly complete image of it. I know there's at least two people out there watching this uh, that know and love that song. You know who you are. Uh, and by now you've probably seen the pattern rhythmically of where this is going and of course We Will Rock You is pretty difficult to play on the piano it's very much a drums and power chord song so basically the, the way I develop the version I play on the piano is out of stiletto so that this kind of usually uh, the version begets the segue this time it's the other way around so, you know. Buddy, you're a boy, make a big noise, playing in the street, gonna be a big man someday. You got blood on your face, big disgrace, when you can't all over the place. 
day singing we will we will rock you singing we will we will rock you you know pretty simple uh way of doing that and so the way i like to perform this is i like to hold way off till the end of stiletto because after the last it's sort of a bridge this is part of na -na -na. these riffs on the outro. And you'll notice that as part of these riffs in the song, the piano often does this. And I'm going to use that as part of We Will Rock You to give it a little more flavor, because otherwise the solo piano version becomes a, a bit stale fairly quickly. But before going into that piano part for the last time. Just doing this. After the last bridge of stiletto. And it's real easy just to start right up with the vocals. But you a boy, make a big noise, playing in the street, gonna be a big move. Someday you got blood on your face, big disgrace, kicking your can all over the place. Singing, we will, we will rock you. again. Um, can't think today, I guess, but it's fairly simple, but the the added effect of the, the blues uh, dominant seventh in the right hand there. Is it, it, it puts a dynamic and it, it differentiates the verse uh, from the chorus of We Will Rock You, so because you're doing three verses and three chorus, you would... You know, you really kind of don't want this the entire time with just a little as an accent. I mean, you want to give it a little flavor. And so that does it. Obviously, it's a different effect on We Will Rock You because this is a, a dominant seventh, whereas the melody is the minor third. So it kind of feels like sort of a blues. Type of uh, chord instead. So it's a little different. But hey, you know, if you're, if you're going to play We Will Rock You on the solo piano, you, you're going to have to change it up in some way. So that's kind of the way I do that. And I, I love to pull this one out of performances, um, be, because, you know, there, there's a few people who know the Billy Joel song. And they're going to love it, and they're going to get it. And everyone else is like, and I, I get this reaction a lot, is like, oh, that's, that's a really cool song. I'll have to look up that album. And people, so people are interested. you got some people psyched and some people interested. And then at the very end, you throw in We Will Rock You, which, as I said, everybody knows. And suddenly, it's that moment of comprehension I've talked about before. It's the, the unification as everyone realizes at the same moment what's going on. And it's really fun. Like I said, I get a lot of laughs, and a lot of people don't expect to hear We Will Rock You on the solo piano. So that's the fun aspect of that one. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, and I will see you again next week as always. Thanks again for watching.